हेलो स्टूडेंट्स कैसे हैं आप सब लोग आई एम सुचिता नलगुंडवार एंड टुडे आर टॉपिक ऑफ डिस्कशन इज क्लोनिंग वेक्टर लेट्स बिगिन चलिए प्रारंभ करते हैं वॉट इज अ वेक्टर अ वेक्टर इज अ कैरियर or a vehicle that delivers a foreign piece of dna into the host organisms vectors help in easy linking of the foreign dna and it also helps in selection of the recombinants from non recombinants now let us discuss the essential features of vectors which are origin of replication selectable marker cloning site and size of vector let's discuss about the origin of replication origin of replication is the sequence from which replication starts any piece of dna linked to the sequence can be made to replicate within the host next let's talk about the selectable markers selectable markers are the genes on the basis of which you can select the transformed and non transformed vectors example presence of antibiotic resistance gene like tetracycline resistance ampicillin resistance or canamycin resistance please remember normal e coli cells do not carry resistance against any of these antibiotics next you must remember that selection can also be done with respect to lac z gene coding for beta galactosidase enzyme this enzyme utilizes its substrate and produces blue colored products next we will be discussing about the cloning site these are the sites where cuts will be made by the restriction endonucleases they are also called recognition site they are present within the selectable markers the vectors need to have very few preferably single recognition site for each restriction endonucleases that are commonly used lastly we need to discuss about the size of the vector the size of the vector should be small as large molecules have a tendency to break down during purification now Let's talk about the vectors commonly used in recombinant DNA technology. The vectors used are plasmids, bacteriophages, cosmids, YAC that is yeast artificial chromosome, BAC that is bacterial artificial chromosome, phage mid and TI plasmid. of agrobacterium tumefaciens this is commonly used for cloning in plant now let us discuss about the plasmids plasmids are found in bacterial cells and in some yeast cells they are extra chromosomal circular double stranded autonomous self replicating pieces of dna they may confer the property of antibiotic resistance or virulence let us discuss about the famous plasmid pbr322 remember that this discussion is immensely important for your neat examination in pbr322 p stands for plasmid B R stands for Bolivar and Rodriguez. Three twenty-two is the number given to the plasmid that separates it from other plasmids developed in the same laboratory. So you can see it like the Aadhaar card number, which is unique to each and every individual. The size of the plasmid is four point three kilobases. It contains. two sets of antibiotic resistance gene 
ampicillin resistance and tetracycline resistance. It also contains cloning site in the ampicillin resistance gene for PST1 and PVU1. Along with this, it also contains cloning site for ECOR1, CLA1, HIND3. In the tetracycline resistance gene, there is the presence of cloning site for BAMH1 and SAL1. Lastly, there is cloning site for PVU2. I would advise you to practice the diagram of PBR322 so that you can easily remember all the cloning sites present in this vector. Now, let's discuss about insertion of foreign DNA in plasmid vector. The foreign DNA is ligated at a restriction site present in one of the two antibiotic resistance gene. For example, you can ligate a foreign DNA at the BAMH1 site of the tetracycline resistance gene in PBR322. After this, there are two fates. Either there will be formation of the recombinant plasmid or there will be the formation of the non-recombinant plasmid. The recombinant plasmid is one in which the foreign DNA is successfully incorporated at the restriction site. Therefore, the recombinant plasmid lose tetracycline resistance due to insertion of the foreign DNA. This inactivation of the selectable marker which in this case is the tetracycline resistance gene due to the insertion of a foreign DNA is known as insertional inactivation. The non-recombinant plasmid on the other hand fails to incorporate the foreign DNA at the restriction site. Therefore, the non Recombinant plasmid retains tetracycline resistance. Now, let us talk about the insertion of plasmid in the host. So, this is a host cell which is mixed with the plasmids and there can be two fates. First, the host cell may not receive any vector then it will be called the non-transformant host cell. The host cell, on the other hand, might receive a vector and it will be called the transformant host cell. The transformant host cell might either receive the recombinant plasmid and form a recombinant transformant cell or the host cell may receive a non-recombinant plasmid and it may form a non-recombinant transformant host cell. Now, the question arises, how will you distinguish amongst them? For that, we need selection using antibiotic resistance. First, let us separate the transformants from the non-transformants. The host cells are cultured in a medium containing ampicillin. The transformants have ampicillin resistant genes, therefore they will survive. The non-transformants do not have ampicillin resistance gene, therefore they will die. In this case, the red colonies indicates they are non-transformants, whereas the green colonies indicates that they are transformants. Therefore, we successfully separated the transformant from the non-transformants. Now, we have to separate the recombinants from the non-recombinants. For this, we will be transferring the transformants in a medium containing tetracycline. In the, in the non-recombinant 
there is no insertional inactivation therefore it will survive in the tetracycline medium whereas in the recombinant there is insertional inactivation because of which all the recombinants will die hence we successfully separated the recombinants from the non recombinants also we can say that the ampicillin resistant and tetracycline sensitive is our required host which is a recombinant transformant host disadvantages of tbr322 selection of recombinants due to insertional inactivation of antibiotic resistance gene is tedious as it requires simultaneous plating of two plates having different antibiotics to overcome the problems associated with pbr322 we can use puc8 in puc8 identification of recombinant cells is achieved in a single step puc8 plasmid contains an ampicillin resistance gene and a lag z gene as a selectable marker in the lag z gene there is the presence of multiple cloning sites now we can ligate a foreign dna in the lag z gene for puc8 we go for blue white screening first we mix the plasmids with the host cells some cells take up recombinant plasmids or other dna by transformation then we plate the bacteria on agar containing exgal a molecule resembling lactose incubate till colonies grow only cells that have taken up plasmids which has ampicillin resistance gene will reproduce and form colonies the recombinant colonies are white in color because of insertional inactivation of the lag z gene therefore beta galactosidase is not produced and hence exgal is not hydrolyzed on the other hand the non recombinant colonies are blue in color because in them there is no insertional inactivation of the lag z gene beta galactosidase is produced hence exgal is hydrolyzed and the colonies produce beautiful blue color so students that is all for today hope this session was immensely productive for all of you do not forget to like subscribe and share for more updates have a great day ahead thank you